Good morning, Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and distinguished guests. I am Lieutenant Hope Eggy, your Master of Ceremonies. On behalf of the Adjutant General for Maryland, Major General Timothy Gowan, we welcome you to the Major General Linda L. Singh Army Naming and Ribbon Cutting Ceremony. Please stand for the arrival of the official party and remain standing for the playing of the national anthem, followed by the invocation by Chaplain Bridges. Let us pray and reflect. O oh, merciful creator of all that exists, we are grateful for this day. We are grateful that we arrived safely to be witnesses to the renaming of the Freedom Readiness Center to the Major General Linda L. Singh Readiness Center. Continue to bless General Singh for her service to humanity. O oh, merciful, let her name be amongst your infinite signs of what focus and faith of a better tomorrow can bring. Let her dedication to diversity, equity, and equality be the electric frequency of life that removes all fault lines of division. Ground us today in that spirit of togetherness. Soften our hearts to live lives of compassion sensitize our hearing to recognize your call. Grant us clarity of thought and vision to live a purposeful life and give us the fortitude to embrace adversity and the will to patiently persevere. We ask this with your mighty name, amen.
Thank you, Chaplain Bridges. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Our official party for today's ceremony is the Honorable Lawrence J. Hogan, the Governor of Maryland. Major, Major General Timothy E. Gowan, the Adjutant General, Maryland National Guard. Our honoree, Dr. Linda L. Singh, Major General, retired. And Brigadier General Janine L. Burkhead, the Assistant Adjutant General for Army National Guard. We would like to extend a very warm welcome to all in attendance today. This is a great day for the Maryland National Guard, the 58th Troop Command, the 200th Military Police Company, and the 729th Quartermaster Company. As we honor Major General Linda Singh's contribution to our organization and to the great state of Maryland. Today we will officially rename this newly constructed facility from the Freedom Readiness Center to the Major General Linda L. Singh Readiness Center. Additionally, we also welcome you as we conduct the official ribbon cutting of this facility. Major General Singh served the Maryland National Guard for over 38 years. She led at every level of the organization from serving as an enlisted soldier, obtaining her commission, and moving through all levels of leadership from company command to the Adjutant General of Maryland. She has served in multiple overseas combat deployments. Here at home, she developed the leaders and members of the Maryland National Guard into a highly effective team, always ready to serve at the request of both our state and federal leadership. In April and into May of 2015, Thanks to her leadership and insight, the Maryland National Guard responded to the civil unrest in Baltimore and assisted with restoring law and order. She continued to make her impacts felt on an international scale, supporting our state partners in Estonia and Bosnia Herzegovina. Major General Singh's leadership and commitment to our Maryland National Guard will be felt for generations to come. As we honor her commitment and contributions and mark her military legacy with the naming of this facility. Now, on this celebratory day for our organization, I would like to introduce our host, the Adjutant General for Maryland, Major General Timothy E. Gowan. Good morning, Governor Hogan, Dr. Singh, General Burkhead, such a pleasure to be with you all here today, Lieutenant Governor, Mr. Treasurer, Madam Speaker, Senators, delegates, commissioners, cabinet secretaries, distinguished officials, welcome. So great to see General Satteros, Dinmore, Flash, Doherty, Ballard, Diener, and Coop. Where's Coop? There he is. Good to see you. Along with the rest of our civilian and military guests that are with us here today. Before I introduce the governor, though, I'd like to take a minute and recognize the significance of this event. We're standing here in this beautiful new armory, which has been provided to us through an enormous feat of teamwork, through local, state, and federal collaboration. Well, every successful team needs a strong leader. And here on the stage with me today are several strong leaders, two to be specific, that I'd like to mention. Without the leadership of General Singh, this armory would never happen. It was her vision her tenacity that got us through a lot of difficult challenges to get an armory stood up, and it, it absolutely makes sense for us to name this beautiful armory after you. Congratulations, Linda. And now I'd like to introduce our greatest advocate. We couldn't have a better commander-in-chief for the Maryland National Guard. Proven, forged in fire, this relationship that we see here. He sets the example for other governors to follow on what a commander-in-chief is. I'd like to introduce Governor Larry Hogan. Well, good morning. Thank you very much. Thank you, General Gowan, uh, for that introduction and for your steadfast leadership of the Maryland National Guard. And uh, General Burkhead, You've been a superstar, thank you. 
Uh, it's really great to be back with all of you uh, this morning. It was almost exactly one year ago that we came together for the official portrait unveiling to celebrate the extraordinary military career of Major General Linda Singh, the 29th Adjutant General of the Maryland National Guard. And it was on that day that I announced for the very first time our intention to officially rename this readiness center as the Major uh, General Linda L. Singh Readiness Center. It was great pulling in here this morning with the sun shining and seeing that as we came through the gate and on the front of the building. We uh, wanted to recognize her incredible and distinguished service. Well, not long after um, I made that announcement here, the Board of Public Works voted unanimously to do just that. Uh, just as General Singh made history when I appointed her as the first woman and the first African American to ever lead the Maryland National Guard, today we uh, once again witness General Singh making history as we add a lasting tribute to her legacy of distinguished service to our state and our nation. And when I think about uh, readiness and what that means, I think back and remember those harrowing days in April of 2015, just 89 days after I took office, when the worst violence in 47 years erupted in our largest city of Baltimore. On the walls of the governor's office in Baltimore are photographs that capture some of the chaos and uncertainty of that week. They show the heroism of our National Guard, our first responders, and the spirit with which the community came together. And one constant in those photos and in our collective memory is General Singh's steady resolve and calm presence, helping us to quickly restore peace and calm to the city. And during that crisis and every chapter of her long and storied career, General Singh exemplified the importance of readiness, serving in staff and command assignments at every level, earning numerous decorations, including the Legion of Merit, the Bronze Star, the Meritorious Service Medal, the Army Commendation Medal, and the Army Achievement Medal, just to name a few. And in an era of increasing divisiveness, she advocated for strengthening the Guard's partnerships with nations across the globe. She led the nation's very first all-female command staff. And she was ready even after stepping down from her post in 2019, when our state and our nation was struck by a global pandemic, I called on her once again to serve as an advisor on our response to COVID-19, uh, an invitation and assignment that she accepted without hesitation. Now, I can think of nothing more appropriate than to dedicate this readiness center in her honor uh, to serve as a daily reminder of her service and to inspire the next generations of women and men of the Maryland National Guard. From the moment I appointed General Singh as Adjutant General to today, near the end of my term as governor, I can truly say that uh, it has been the honor of a lifetime to serve as Commander-in-Chief of the Maryland National Guard, which is one of the finest military organizations in America. And I just want to express how proud I am and uh, how proud we all are of each and every one of the men and women of the Maryland National Guard. That's especially true today as we celebrate General Singh and the values that she upheld throughout her entire life. Hard work, determination, and character. So General Singh, congratulations to you and your family. May God bless the Maryland National Guard and each and every one of you and keep you safe and may God continue to bless the great state of Maryland and the United States of America. Thank you.
At this time, I'm going to ask General Singh to please come forward so that I can present her with a governor's citation memorializing her well-deserved recognition today. Congratulations. Thank you, Governor Hogan. At this time, the Speaker of the House, Adrian Jones, will present Major General Singh a citation. Senator Katie Fry Hester will present a citation to General Singh. Thank you, Senator Fry Hester. Lastly, Carroll County Commission President Ed Rothstein will present a citation. Okay, I'm gonna break a little uh, protocol from my uh, predecessors. Just wanna say a couple of quick things. One, it's a great day in Carroll County and uh, cannot be more proud of General Singh, as a friend and as a leader for our community, it's not about constituents, it's about community, and you have led by example with the be no do attitude. Taking it beyond Baltimore, I spent 30 plus years in uniform, and what I saw in Iraq and Afghanistan is a term said in Farsi, shona be shona, shoulder by shoulder. That's how we served with the Maryland National Guard's men and women whether it be in harm's way in Afghanistan and Iraq, Shona be Shona, shoulder to shoulder. And I cannot be more proud to be here this morning in honoring you today. Thank you. It is now my great pleasure to introduce to you the honoree for this naming ceremony, Major General Linda L. Singh. So good morning, everyone. Governor Hogan, thank you. Because it was an amazing ride. And I really just wanna say um, before I start thanking everybody else, but you know the the day that I walked into your office to interview for the adjutant general's role I walked back out and I got into my car and I called my husband and I said If I'm offered the job, I think I'm gonna take it and He goes I already knew that <laughs> He said so let's just wait and see what happens and I do believe that I got the call before Christmas of that year, of 2014. It was the best Christmas gift that I could have ever gotten. So I wanna thank you for just being such an amazing boss, but more importantly, an amazing friend, and I consider you to be family. Um, so you are part of the broader community and family, and I wanna say thank you. And you know you can always call on me. Sometimes I may not answer, but you can always call on me. And then to General Galwin and General Burkhead and General Flash, because I know that you guys were at the spur of pushing to make this happen behind the scenes and trying to keep everything a secret. Um, and I want to thank you for just what you do every single day. And, and watching all of you over the last few years have made me miss it, 
but not enough to put the uniform back on. <laughs> However, though, I would say that when all the stuff started with Ukraine, it almost made me want to put the uniform back on. And then to all the distinguished guests that are here today, um, you know, this whole thing of partnership. I don't think that people truly understand, you know, what our legislators do, what our community leaders do, and how important it is that we partner with them, that we listen, we try to be the voice to help support the issues that we want to see as a community resolved. And I think most of the time, we like to say, well, they did this to us, but what did we do? And so I wanna thank you all for being a great partner all the time that I served as the adjutant general, and even still now, I really appreciate that. And that also goes to the cabinet secretaries because you guys are amazing peers, let me just tell you. And I know I still call on some of you, but you know, you've just been unbelievably amazing. And Lieutenant Governor, you know, <laughs> Bill and I, and you know, Bill Palazzi is here. Him and I talk about you um, periodically, right? Um, when we go to do the thing at Harvard and we talk about that fatherly look that you gave us that night in 2015. And let me just tell you, you're such a quiet and steady soul. You're amazing, thank you. Thank you so much. And then to my family and my friends, thank you, thank you, thank you, as I look out over the crowd, because this is just as much for you as it is for me. And for those of you that you know, don't know, I grew up in this area, not far from here. My parents and grandparents lived about 20 minutes down the road. And so this is about as close as you can get to putting an armory in my backyard um, without putting it right on Jim Smith Lane, which would have been pretty cool, actually. <laughs> and if I would have thought about it, if we were actually selling our family property at the time this came up, that would have been a great place for an armory, let me just tell you. Um, and so I, you know, I can't imagine, and I couldn't have imagined you know, in 1981, when I got the opportunity to put on the uniform, ever standing here and seeing a building named after me, first off is like taboo. The first thing you think of is, am I gonna die? Um, but I think more importantly, it just goes to show that I always wanted to live a life to make an impact. And now I understand that it's not just making an impact, it's living a life of significance. And a life of significance, that means that you put others first. And when you put others first, amazing things happen. And I think we often, especially these days, we forget about putting others first. We always think that we have to be the first for everything and that you know, our priorities are most important, but sometimes it's just even more important to turn around and look at someone else and put them first. Make them the priority, even if it means that you have to inconvenience yourself. And I think we all have to think about that. And then when I think what this building means, every time that I drive by here, it's going to remind me of a career that really gave me everything. The guard took me off the street. For those that don't know, it took me off the street. It gave me hope. At first it was a paycheck because I needed it. But then it became just part of me. And there's no greater feeling to know that when you walk in to a building, you walk into an organization, you walk into a team, that you are happy to serve. So for those of you that have served under me, could you please stand?
Thank you. Because this is yours. This is your legacy. Because I couldn't have done it without you. And when I look at the generals, the sergeant majors, the colonels, I know that what we fought for to get this building here was the right thing to do. It was absolutely the right thing to do. And hopefully, for the unit that's here, which I do believe it's a logistical unit, which you know that's near and dear to my heart, logistics, supply chain, for those of you that don't understand the term of logistics, the supply chain, which as we've seen through the pandemic, it's critical. It's the center that makes everything go. And without the supply chain, without logistics on the battlefield, everything stops. Everything stops. And so for you to have a new home, to be here, I just hope you make me proud with the legacy. Support all the way to the end of the battle, no matter where, because that's important. And as I look out over the crowd, I'm, I'm just going to say, you know, there are a couple of folks that I'm just amazingly proud of. And I'm looking at you in the front row, some of you in the second row, some of you in the third row, and the fourth row, and some of you way back there. Yes, I see you all. Thank you for putting up with me. My crazy ideas, you know, the you know, telling you that you're not doing enough. I still think you're not doing enough. You need to do a little bit more. But for each and every single one of you that came in to, to talk with me, I want you to realize that your potential, you're still only hitting the tip of the iceberg. You have so much more potential. And while you may be in uniform today, when you're not in uniform, it still stays in your heart. And that doesn't mean that your potential stops. It just means that you lift and shift. And you keep charging hard. And I want you to remember that. Always keep charging hard. So I want to thank every single one of you for being here today. I know that I have so many other family and friends to to thank out there and uh, teams that are here and from the, you know, all of my police chiefs that are here, right? Chiefs and uh, Lieutenant, Lieutenant Singh and my husband who's not here, so he apologizes. He couldn't be here this morning. And then I am going to, you know, give a shout out to Bill Palazzi, my battle buddy, because in 2015, um, Bill and I were shoulder to shoulder. And you've been a good friend. And I thank you for that. And so you just have no idea, um, but you've been an amazing friend. And so, you know, God bless you, and I hope you continue to do well. And then, you know, Shanice, for those of you who don't know, Lieutenant Singh is here, and she's in uniform today. Um, I think Chief Awad had something to do with that, so thank you. Thank you both, ladies. Um, I really, really appreciate your support and keeping your mom in check, Shanice. Yes, thank you. So thank you. Thank you, General Singh. The new Major General Linda L. Singh Readiness Center began construction in the fall of 2018, and after completion in June of 2022, opened its doors in support of the 200th Military Police Company and the 729th Quartermaster Company. 
This facility replaces the Ellicott City National Guard Armory and the Catonsville National Guard Armory, which were constructed in the 1950s and were no longer suitable to support the modern needs of the National Guard. The design and construction budget for this project consisted of $19 million in federal funding and $9 million in state funding, and with additional funding for furniture, fixtures, and equipment, the total cost for this project was $30 million. This facility is sited on 57 acres of state-owned land, which adjoins the Springfield Hospital Center. This two-story masonry constructed building is 16,000 square foot in size with a 7,000 square foot storage building and over three acres of military vehicle parking. This state-of-the-art facility consists of two unit admin areas, four classrooms, an assembly hall, two maintenance training bays, and two supply rooms with secure storage, bathrooms and locker rooms, physical fitness room, commercial kitchen, and a backup generator. Upon completion, this project has achieved an LEED gold certification as a sustainable energy efficient building from the U.S. Green Building Council. We would now like to recognize key individuals who through their support and dedication, this project went from an idea to reality. These individuals and organizations include Maryland Army National Guard Construction and Facilities Management Office, Project Manager Mr. Mark Freedy, and Agency Architect Ms. Denise Smith. Maryland Department of General Services, Capital Projects Manager Mr. Ben Wood, Deputy Chief of Construction Mr. Doug Karmasek, and Construction Inspectors Mr. Bill Gover and Mr. Dan Price. Architectural and Engineering Services provided by Whitman, Ricard and Associates, Mr. Doug Kelso, Mr. Eric Beard Sackett, and Mr. Ryan Hausman. General Contracting by TMI General Contractors, Principal and Project Executive, Mr. Sean Raver, Assistant Project Manager, Ms. Bridget Wilson, and Project Superintendent, Mr. Randy Will and Mr. Joe Murphy. At this time, I introduce to you again our Adjutant General, Maryland National Guard, Major General Timothy Gowan. Good morning again. Now more than ever, our nation relies on the Army National Guard. This facility demonstrates our nation and state's commitment to ensure we have world-class facilities to enhance the readiness and support our community. The Major General Linda L. Singh Readiness Center is a reality because of the combined efforts of the federal legislators who appropriate funding through military construction budget processes that provided 75% of the cost to this facility, and the governor and state legislature who funded the remaining 25%. I would be remiss if I didn't include the Maryland Department of General Services, who continues to partner with us to deliver exceptional facilities for the National Guard. Our capital investment strategy focuses on reducing our real estate portfolio to an affordable level where our readiness centers can serve our communities enhance our commitment to a reduced carbon footprint, and ensure our soldiers have the capabilities to prepare for full-spectrum operations wherever the Army needs us. Training to, to these high standards, our soldiers are best prepared to respond to state emergencies at a moment's notice. You are now sitting in a facility that leverages the best in simulation training, enhanced training spaces, exceptional administration, administrative and logistic support areas, and has incorporated lactation support rooms, making it easier for our soldiers to serve as they welcome their new family members. Thank you for being here today to witness this historic event. And at this time, I'd like to ask that our Governor, the Commander-in-Chief, Dr. Singh, and Brigadier General Burkhead, our Maryland Army National Guard Commander to join me to cut the ribbon and officially open this facility, the new home of the 729th Quartermaster Company and a 200th MP Company.
As the official party makes their way back to their seats, please note our photographer will be available at the conclusion of the ceremony to take additional photographs. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Please rise for the benediction by Chapel Bridges and remain standing for the playing of the Army song and the departure of the official party. Let us pray and reflect. O bestower of good and protection from evil, to whom belongs the best of names. Let the new name of this building capture the ideals that our state and nation were founded upon. Let us stand for a more just world, even if that stance is against ourselves. Color each soldier that enters the doors of this edifice courageous. Grant them the capacity to dare to be different in order to make a difference. Guide us all to be change agents for a more just world. As we depart, let our walk in this life be an embodiment of those character traits that makes General Singh a great leader, resilient, tenacious, accepting, and humble. One who not only gives a helping hand, but also the time to know her neighbor. May your winds guide us towards new people and new experiences. And if those winds are tumultuous, give us strength of mind, body, and spirit to endure. Amen. This concludes our ceremony. On behalf of our official party today, I thank you all for your attendance on this special day. Please stay for a light reception immediately following the ceremony.